Hey, welcome to the eighth video of the Getting Started with LT Spice. Uh, today we're going to be covering how to import third-party models. So if you remember, this is the SparkFun Electric uh, microphone breakout board, which has, which has a preamplifier uh, included in the product. So the op-amp that's used is actually a Texas Instruments part and is not uh, a model that's already defined in LT Spice. So the way models usually look, so the, the more common Spice program is called P-Spice. So most manufacturers are going to have uh, P-Spice models included on their product page where you can download the data sheet. So what we're gonna do is we're going, to, since we know it's a Texas Instruments part, we will go to texasinstruments.com We'll search for the OPA 344 op-amp, which is used in this circuit. And to download the, um, the model, you'll go to Tools and Software. Click the P-SPICE model. I've actually not, I haven't had any luck trying to import the Tina TI SPICE models into LT-SPICE. So I'll click on this and it'll automatically download a file that I'll need to unzip. So I'm going to extract this to a folder in my tutorial folder. And then I'll open that folder up. And the file that I'm really concerned with is this .lib. So I'm going to try and open this with Notepad++. And this is great. So the most important part of a dot .model or dot .subcircuit is that it has a unique name and that um, its pins are clearly labeled with an order. So pin 3 is in plus, pin 2 is in minus, Pin 7 is V plus, pin 4 is V minus, and pin 6 is out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this as a .txt file where I have that circuit saved, which is here, electric mic. I'll pull back up LT Spice. Now I know that this is an op amp. So when I go to place a component, I'll go to op amps. And LT Spice has a generic five port pin op amp called op amp two. And this is the one that you wanna put down. So here in the text file, it had a specific name listed on the dot sub circuit, your op amp symbol must be named that same name. So right click, go to value, and then change that to OPA 2344. Now you need to include that text file so that you know that, you know, V plus is corresponding to, um, well actually, before we do that, let me open up, I'm gonna, open a new instance so I can show you something. So we're going to put down that op amp 2 and then we're going to open the symbol. So if I hover over this port and pin, this is V plus, this is V minus, this is out, this is in minus, and in plus. So if we pull back up this, almost all op amps are going to have that same labeling where you'll have in plus, in minus, V plus, V minus, and out. And that makes things very, very easy for importing third party models. Because if these names were anything different, let's say this was V in plus or V in minus, it wouldn't work. You'd have to go in and change it. So, we can get rid of this. 
that dot text file automatically maps those outputs to the to the right um, to the right port of the symbol. So now we'll go to our dot op, do dot include. So you can either just leave it as dot inc, or you can spell out the full name include. And we're going to list, we're going to add the name of the text file that's saved where our circuit is saved, which is dot include opa two three four four dot text. So we're going to edit that. And let's see if this. Uh, was mapped correctly, if it will, if it imported correctly, and if it will behave the same way that the circuit behaved with the previous model. So we'll hit run, map the output, and it does exactly. Um, and that's how you import third-party models. There are several different ways that this can be done. This, this specific way of changing the .lib file to a .txt file um, I've found to be the easiest, the fastest, to go from downloading to getting your simulation up and running. I will be adding videos on different ways to import third-party models in the future, and if you know of a specific way, or if, if you've been taught a specific way but something's confusing about it, uh, go to the forums and let me know, uh, and I'll post another video on how to do it the way that you're familiar with. And that's it for importing third-party models.